yes good afternoon everyone let's do a see the glucose molecule how it is going to have the linear structure how it is failed to explain certain properties then we have seen the cyclization of the glucose molecule by the intramolecular hemiacetal formation then how it is going to be explaining certain properties of your glucose all these things we have seen yesterday and we have seen alpha d glucose and beta d glucose the alpha d glucose molecule is going to have plus 110 degree rotation whereas the beta d glucose molecule is going to have plus 19.7 degree whenever we are going to take the glucose that is going to have the mixture of alpha d glucose and beta d glucose which is going to comprising 36% is alpha d glucose 64% is beta d glucose that's why we discussed yesterday and we have seen the simplified version of your havoc projection for an alpha d glucose and beta d glucose we have seen and today we are going to discuss about fructose the fructose is also called as levulose and also called as fruit sugar these are the other names you can able to give for your fructose what they are it is also called as levulose and fruit sugar already discussed for the glucose we are having glucose can also be called as blood sugar it can also be called as dextrose it can also be called as a grape sugar that is going to be present in grapes but commonly which is going to be present in fruits it is fructose that's why it's called as fruit sugar but we are going to have grape we are having your glucose that is called as grape sugar and usually are having a blood blood sugar and levulose it's a levo rotatory why we call as dextrose for a glucose it's called as dextro rotatory glucose that's why it is dextrose here it is levo rotatory that's why it is called as levulose when we are going to take fructose how it is going to be having this is called fructose if you can see the alpha d glucose and alpha d fructose we are going to call them as glucose and fructose where they are having variation the aldehyde is the functional group in case of glucose ketone is the functional group in case of fructose these two can be called as functional isomers why because aldehyde and ketone other than that the formula is same and the preparation already has seen in case of starch is going to give glucose whereas sucrose is going to give glucose and fructose from there we can able to obtain the fructose anyway we are going to discuss structural details about the fructose we are not going to discuss about the other details just how it is going to form the structure and what is this one again we are supposed to see the chiral carbon at the least priority that is going to be this carbon is the least priority chiral carbon now it is going to be called as d Fructose. Now this D fructose, how it is going to be get cyclized? How it is going to be get cyclized? Just remember how I discussed for a glucose, a aldehyde is present, and you are having alcohol. So aldehyde and alcohol is going to be reacting, and they are going to form the acetal, hemiacetal structure. Here, what you are having, ketone is there. So this ketone, the reaction with alcoholic groups which are present in your fructose molecule this is going to be shifted like this and now here this is going to break here i am going to get minus here i am going to get plus now this h plus is going to o minus and this o minus is going to c plus understand so this h plus is going to cleave and it is going to have the reaction with this o and the co minus is going to attack on c plus so what is going to be happen here this is called as intra molecular ketal formation the glucose undergo cyclization due to 
intramolecular hemiacetal formation whereas the ketone the fructose is going to have the cyclization due to intramolecular hemiketal formation so here also the same thing yesterday we discussed for the glucose molecule there is a chance of having fourth to carbon and fifth to carbon fourth to carbon if you are having we are able to get five member ring and fifth to carbon you are going to get six member ring six member ring is more stable than five member ring that we have given the priority for the six member ring and we have given pyrrole structure but in case of fructose if we given the number in 1 2 3 4 5 6 now 2 and 4 is going to form 1 2 3 one oxygen bridge only four member ring not stable the only chance i am having is for fructose 1 2 3 4 and this oxygen so what are the carbons which are involved in ring formation usually we are going to get yes you see here this o minus is becoming oh and here i am having ch2oh now 1 2 3 4 5 so now the ring formation is going to take place between these two carbons and the sixth carbon is as it is and here h here h and oh here oh and h no modification for the carbons which are present over here 1 2 3 4 5 6 so which are going to be involved in ring formation 2 3 4 5 and oxygen 1 and 6 out of the ring and usually you are going to get a questions from this particular area is but number of carbons are involved in cyclization of glucose molecule what is the question how many number of carbons are involved in cyclization of your glucose how many we are having six carbons in glucose all six carbons are involved in cyclization all six carbons are involved in cyclization why because we are not asking about how many carbons are present in the ring of your alpha d glucose we are asking how many carbons are involved in cyclization of glucose then obviously the answer will be 6 if at all they are asking what carbons are going to be present in the ring so then we can say five carbons and that to which which carbons one to five carbons are present sixth carbon is out of the ring similarly when we are going to look at your fructose what number carbons are involved in ring that is 2 3 4 5 carbons are involved in ring formation 1 and 6 are going to be out of the ring if here also they are asking how many carbons are involved in the ring formation then it is going to be 6 is the answer but if they are asking about the number of carbons present in a ring of fructose then it is going to be 4 understand this is the question they are usually asking just remember that particular point and now here we are going to have furan i think everyone knows about that furan this is furan no the similarly we are going to take the furanose form we are going to call so the same thing i can able to write it here now this is furan ring and now here the first carbon is going to be present so what are the number carbon is on 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 will be out of the ring so that is how i can able to write the furanose form and here third position same thing which are left on top which are right on down so that's a oh will be on top h will be down and here h on top oh down here h ch2 oh now this is going to be alpha d fructose alpha d fructose because oh on right hand side if at all i want to write beta d fructose how i can write this one <coughs> excuse me.
now here it is oh on left hand side now this one can be called as beta d fructose this is beta d fructose if i want to write this one oh on top ch2 oh oh h h o h h c h 2 o h this is beta d fructose this is alpha d fructose out of these two structures which is going to be more stable out of these two which is going to be more stable alpha d fructose is going to have steric repulsion of ch2 o h ch2 o h as they are in same side whereas if you are taking the beta d fructose the ch2 o h on top here ch2 o h down here there will be a less repulsion because of less repulsion always the fructose is going to be existing in beta d fructose then the alpha d fructose again the alpha d beta d are comes under anomers now the one more question you can able to expect from this one where will be the anomeric carbon in case of fructose whereas in case of glucose where is the anomeric carbon that is the first carbon is turns into anomeric carbon here in case of fructose which carbon is turns into anomeric carbon second carbon isn't it i got a new chiral carbon at the second position that's why anomeric carbon in case of fructose it is second carbon whereas in case of glucose it is first carbon that's what you are going to have these two also can be called as anomers and this is about your fructose which is going to be levo rotatory the alpha d we can write here minus as it is levo rotatory i am going to write it as alpha d minus fructose that's what you can able to write d minus and alpha d beta d both are minus only alpha and beta not changing the stereo isomerism d and l are going to be changing the isomerism but alpha and beta is not going to change the isomerism so that's why beta d fructose is stable which is going to be levo rotatory that's what you can able to be remember from this part the fructose understand now we will go for some other carbohydrates which are important we can see their structure if you are taking ribose which is a aldopentose so this is going to be aldo pentose and it is always going to form a furanose form so this is going to be this is how we are going to have and this is called as alpha d ribose and what is the importance of this alpha d ribose i think everyone knows about this one so alpha d ribose and beta d ribose what is the beta d ribose if you change this one oh h h h oh h h oh h and here it is h c h 2 o h it is going to be beta d ribose now if you can see dna which is a reoxy ribonucleic acid or rna ribonucleic acid these two are having the major difference is the presence of sugar so the sugar moiety present in your dna is going to be deoxy ribose and whereas in rna it is going to be d ribose so this is going to be present in rna this is called as 
2 prime d oxy if you can see the second position we are not having oxygen so it is going to be 2 d oxy ribose so this 2 d oxy ribose is going to be present in d and a so it is going to be present in rna and this is going to be present in dna that is only the major difference we are going to have for the dna and rna that is ribose moiety the sugar moiety which is present in dna is 2 prime deoxy ribose whereas in rna are going to have ribose that's what the major difference we are going to have for a rna and dna that is what you are supposed to remember it there we are having the ribose which is going to be present in furanose form beta d furanose form <clears throat> so the next one we will see the disaccharides maltose so maltose can also be called as malt sugar and this is going to be made by the alpha d glucose plus one more alpha d glucose as you said disaccharide is a carbohydrate which on hydrolysis is going to give two monosaccharides so here one two monosaccharides we are going to get from the maltose we are going to get two alpha d glucose molecules now how these alpha d glucose molecules are going to form a bond always a bond between the two carbohydrates is called as glycosidic bond what it is called as glycosidic bond we will see now how the glycosidic bond is going to be formed alpha d glucose Now this is one alpha D glucose, this is one alpha D glucose. Out of these two, we are going to take the hydroxyl groups present on this position and this position. They can able to give the water molecule. They can able to give the water molecule. So this water molecule is going out and now what is going to be happen here? So from here one oxygen is going to be just yesterday I said it is simplified we can able to write it. Now what it is maltose is going to be formed by a bond between the first carbon of one alpha D glucose and a fourth carbon of another one. One and four. So this is called as alpha D glucose now. That's why alpha. And what is the position of carbon which is involved in glycosidic bond? First position. And to which bond it is going to be having? Fourth carbon of another one. So it is called as alpha one four glycosidic bond. One for glycosidic bond which is going to form a maltose that is because of two alpha D glucose molecule. And one more thing we are going to discuss here reducing and non-reducing. What are reducing sugars? What are non-reducing sugars? Reducing sugars are the sugars which are going to have ability to reduce your failing reagent and tolens reagent what we discussed for the glucose molecule. So glucose can able to reduce our failing cell tolerance to give red precipitate and silver precipitate. The same thing is going to be happen for any carbohydrate. We are going to call that one as reducing sugar. When we are not going to have that ability to reduce our failing cell tolerance, we are going to call that one as non-reducing sugar. So here all monosaccharides are going to be comes under your reducing sugars because as they are having the functional group which is free that functional group is going to make 
the failing reagent and tollens reagent to get reduced that is the reason we are going to have the reducing sugar whereas if you are going to take this particular maltose also it is going to have a free functional group always the first carbon even though we are writing oh this is not the original oh it's a functional group isn't it ch2 aldehyde on me ester formation we are going to get this one that means always this first carbon is going to be functional group in this case <coughs> excuse me this first chiral carbon which is going to be anomeric that is not free it is involved in bond but whereas coming to this one it is going to have the free aldehyde group that's why it can able to acting as reducing end out of these two glucose which is going to be useful for reducing reducing sugar this one so based on this one only we can say this alpha glucose can be present or beta glucose can be present so that we can have two types of maltoses alpha maltose beta maltose why it is alpha maltose beta maltose that the glucose molecule which is going to be acting as a reducing and that can be existing in either alpha form or beta form if it is existing in alpha form we are going to call this as alpha maltose if it is existing in beta form we are going to call it as beta maltose so that is the reason we can have alpha maltose beta maltose based on the other glucose molecule which is going to be acting as reducing end that is going to be deciding whether it is alpha or beta these are the things which are important for the alpha d glucose and alpha d glucose are the components of your maltose and second one what is the bond present they are alpha 14 glycosidic bond that is the important one and it can be existing in two forms alpha and beta so what is alpha what is beta alpha maltose is going to be having alpha d glucose at the reducing end if you are having beta d glucose then it is going to be called as beta maltose understand so this is what you are having for maltose and the second one lactose this is going to have beta d galactose beta d glucose we are going to have beta d galactose and beta d glucose now the beta d galactose is going to combine with beta d glucose and most or you will be knowing that lactose is also called as milk sugar the lactose is a sugar we are going to have in milk that's why it is also called as milk sugar and what is beta d galactose beta d galactose is the epimer of glucose epimer of glucose what is epimer epimer is a optical isomer where we are having a difference at any one chiral carbon anomers what i said it is going to have a difference at first chiral carbon or anomeric carbon that is going to be called as anomer but whereas this one is going to be having the difference at only one chiral carbon then they are called as epimer glucose and galactose are having the difference at only fourth position if you can remember this is a glucose molecule 1 2 3 4 this fourth position if oh is reversed that is going to be comes under galactose that's it simple so i'm going to write here it's beta that's why oh should be on top h second position hoh as it is this is oh h and now for glucose and this one it's a fourth position difference that's why oh should be reversed h ch2 oh now this is going to be combined with beta d glucose only that's why oh h h oh h oh oh h oh h, oh h, oh h, oh h. So if you can see the beta d glucose, beta d galactose, where they differed only at fourth position. The fourth position here, even H O H down here, O H up. That is only the difference. And here also we are going to have the water molecule is going to be taken out and.
Now, what it is going to be called as? Now, this is beta configuration. Beta at which one? First carbon to fourth carbon glycosidic bond. What we can call this one as? Beta 1,4 glycosidic bond. So, that is what we can able to give the linkage for your lactose. What linkage we are going to have here? Beta 1,4 glycosidic bond. How we are going to give the name? The based on what configuration of the galactose, what configuration of the glucose, how they are going to be linking beta 1,2,4 glycosidic bond. That is what the bond we are going to give for the two carbohydrates which we are having. Understand? Now, when we are going to call a particular compound, say for example maltose, what I can call? Alpha 1,4 glucoside. This is going to be called as beta 1,4 glucoside. And one more point we discussed about the maltose is, it is reducing. Here what happened? Here also same thing. This is going to be reducing. Here it is having the free functional group. Because of glucose, it is going to be acting as reducing sugar and lactose is also having alpha and beta based on what configuration it is going to be present. Usually, are saying two beta D galactose and beta -galact glucose are going to have the lactose configuration, but the chance is there to get converted into alpha, then they are going to call it as alpha lactose, alpha lactose, beta lactose. That is how we are going to have the maltose and lactose and the one more important one we are having disaccharide is sucrose we are going to discuss. The next one is going to be sucrose. Sucrose is also called as cane sugar also called as invert sugar. No need to explain why it is called as cane sugar. Why it is called as cane sugar? It is going to be present in sugar cane. That is what is called as cane sugar. Whereas invert sugar, just we will discuss after discussing the structure. Okay. So now what are going to be present for sucrose? This is alpha D glucose. and beta D fructose. What we are having here? It is going to have alpha D glucose and beta D fructose. These are the things are going to be present in your sucrose molecule. And what is alpha D glucose? This is alpha D glucose. This is beta D fructose. I already explained both the structures. These are now, we are having the linkage chances are first position of this one, second position of this one, isn't it? Second carbon, fructose we can have, it is second carbon, or glucose is a first carbon. Now, we are going to have, like this is going to be taken out. So, this is how I am going to have so this 
CH2H DOM and this is the linkage I am going to have and here same as it is OH, H, 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 OH, H, 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 CH2OH and here HOH, H, O, H, 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 O, H, 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 Understand how we are going to have the linkage for the sucrose molecule. It is composed of alpha D glucose and beta D fructose. And this is the alpha D glucose, this is beta D fructose. What is this linkage is called? The linkage in case of sucrose, you can able to have two names. What they are? This is one and this is two. With respect to alpha D glucose, I can call this one as alpha 1 2 linkage, glycosidic linkage. With respect to fructose, I can call this one as beta 2 1 linkage. I hope everyone can understand. Students, just yes, it is going to be alpha 1 2 linkage and this is going to be beta 2 1 linkage. What it is? We are going to in terms of alpha D glucose if I writing alpha first one of the glucose linked to the second carbon of the fructose that side is going to be called as alpha 1 2 linkage. Whereas with respect to beta D fructose, if you are saying it, beta 2 of fructose is going to be linked with first position of your glucose. That's why I can write as beta 2 1 linkage. Whenever they are asking the question, what type of linkage is present in sucrose, you can able to write alpha 1 2 glycosidic bond or beta 2 1 glycosidic bond because this is the variation we are going to have. Understand? This is the structure of your sucrose. And now, is there any possibility of having reducing end here? It is a non-reducing sugar. Even though it is a disaccharide, the only disaccharide which is acting as a non-reducing sugar is your sucrose. Reason for this one is, see here alpha D glucose, first carbon is the aldehyde functional group which is involved in cyclization. Whereas in case of fructose, second carbon is a ketone group which is involved in bond. Earlier we have seen maltose and lactose, what they are? They are going to have, maltose is having one free glucose molecule which is able to act as a reducing end. And galactose is also having the beta D glucose is acting as a reducing end. That's why I am having the chance to have reducing power for them. But here both the functional groups are involved in bonding. That's why it's a non-reducing sugar. So many important points are there for the sucrose. The first point already we discussed, it can have two types of glycosidic linkage, we can define them. Alpha 1, 2 glycosidic bond, beta 2, 1 glycosidic bond and it is going to be acting as a non-reducing sugar. The only disaccharide which is acting as non-reducing sugar is your sucrose. And the next one I said it is called as invert sugar. It is called as invert sugar because it is showing the property called inversion. It's called as invert sugar because the property inversion. What is inversion? What is inversion? See, when you are going to take the sucrose molecule, it is going to have dextrorotatory. This is going to have dextrorotatory. What is the meaning of dextrorotatory? If a plane polarized light is going to be rotated towards the right hand side, we are going to call that one as dextrorotatory. If it is rotating the light towards left, it is going to be called as levorotatory. So, it is going to be dextrorotatory with plus 66.5 degree. It is going to have plus 66.5 degree rotation that is towards clockwise direction. When we are going to take aqueous solution of this one, Aqua solution of sucrose is going to be levorotatory. Is going to have minus 20 degree. So, see properly here. I think everyone can able to understand what I am saying here. Now, when we are taking a sucrose molecule, this is going to have plus 66.5 degree. It is a dextrorotatory. 
but when we are going to take the aqueous solution of this one it is going to become levo rotatory that means what is going to be happen the dextro is becoming levo till now it is rotating clockwise direction now suddenly it is becoming anti clockwise direction so when you are having clockwise is becoming anti clockwise it is inverted we are going to call that's why this is called as process inversion as it shows inversion we are going to call this one as invert sugar we will understand why it is going to be doing like this see sucrose intact it is going to have the glycosidic bond when it is going to be get dissolved in water it will be get hydrolyzed to give alpha d glucose and beta d fructose what we are going to get when it is going to be get hydrolyzed it is going to give alpha d glucose and beta d fructose we are going to have so beta d fructose is going to have minus 92.4 degree and this is going to have plus 52.5 degree the rotation for this alpha d glucose is plus 52.5 degree whereas for beta d fructose it is minus 92.4 degree so net rotation if you are going to take which is more negative is more that's why we are going to have net rotation for this one is levo i hope you can able to understand what we discussed for the sucrose sucrose is called as cane sugar because it is obtaining from sugar cane and the sucrose is going to be called as invert sugar because it is showing inversion why it is showing inversion because of the hydrolysis of sucrose in aqueous solution we can have both alpha d glucose and beta d glucose sorry beta d fructose are present in your aqueous solution so they are having plus 52.5 minus 92.4 so that we can have more negative value that's why the dextro is becoming levo it's called as inversion and this is going to be called as invert sugar and the linkage is if we can take alpha 1 2 glycosidic linkage and beta 2 1 linkage that's what you can have the glycosidic linkages for your sucrose molecule and it is also going to have non reducing sugar because both the functional groups are involved in bond formation whatever the functional group responsive properties are there they can't be shown by your sucrose molecule the reason is it is not having the functional group free both of them are involved in bonding and that's the reason we can't have no alpha glucose beta glucose sorry alpha sucrose beta sucrose why the reason as you are having maltose and fructose and your lactose are going to have one free glucose molecule where i can able to give alpha and beta forms of maltose and lactose the same thing is not possible here because both of them are involved in bond formation and there is no motor rotation for this one because it's not a reducing sugar all reducing sugars only can able to show motor rotation here we can't able to have motor rotation this change in rotation is not called as motor rotation i said the gradual change here abrupt change the gradual change only called as motor rotation the sucrose can't show motor rotation understand okay now we'll see the polysaccharides so the next one polysaccharides what polysaccharides are having first one we'll see the starch so starch is going to be present in maximum all uh, vegetables and all cereals we are going to have so that starch is going to be present in all the forms it is a important carbohydrate we are having so this is going to be made of alpha d glucose is going to be made of alpha d glucose and the uh, starch is going to be having two forms are present one is amylose and the other one is amylopectin we can see the two forms of starch amylose and amylopectin what is amylose it's a linear form of that is the linear polymerization we are going to have straight chains only in amylose and here i am going to have branched chain here 
it is a linear form it's a branched form how we are going to get linear like this if you are taking so what is the linkage here we are going to have extension of maltose if you can see all are like alpha d glucose alpha d glucose alpha d glucose is extending and it is going to have everywhere alpha 14 alpha 14 like this so what linkage we are going to have here alpha 14 glycosidic linkages all are going to be linear that's what is called as linear form whereas if i taking this one so this is as usual we are going to have linear form and the same way we are going to have so we are going to have the linear form how we are going to have for the amylose the same thing is there for amylopectin also but rather than this linear we are also having one branch is there when we are having the branch we are going to have one sixth position it's called as alpha 16 linkage and here it is having alpha 14 linkages so when we are going to take the amylose is going to be a linear form which is going to consist of only alpha 14 linkages whereas amylopectin is a branched chain form which is going to have alpha 14 as well as alpha 16 linkages so both will be present in case of your amylopectin and the next one if you are taking this is water soluble it's going to be water soluble and this is going to be water insoluble this is going to be water soluble and this is going to be water insoluble and that is going to be making the amylose and amylopectin the difference and if you can take amylose it is going to have 15 to 20% of starch is going to be comprising of amylose whereas 80 to 85% is going to be amylopectin the composition of amylose and amylopectin is also going to be different 15 to 20% amylose and 80 to 85% amylopectin is going to be present in the starch molecule if you can see and when we are going to take the starch is also going to be having an identification test by using iodine So iodine is going to be give starch iodide, which is going to be blue in color. That is the indication of presence of starch. We are going to see the starch is very important for a storage food for all the plants. The plants are going to have the food is stored in the form of starch. So that's what we are going to have the starch. These are the points they are going to be asking usually, and we are going to have one more. I will discuss here only. The second one is going to be. glycosan glycosan is also called as animal starch it is going to be called as animal starch the glycosan is called as animal starch because it is almost similar to your starch in a characteristics as well as properties what is going to have 
So glycogen we can say simply amylopectin. It is not having linear form. It is simply amylopectin. The branching will be more for glycogen compared to this one. What it means? If I am going to have this one around some 20 to 30, for every 20 to 30 glucose molecules if I am having, here I am going to have for every 12 to 15 molecules I can have the branch. This alpha 1, 6 linkage can be seen in case of your amylopectin that is every 20 to 30, whereas in case of glycogen it is going to be 12 to 15 molecules only we can able to get the linkage. That is what we can have the difference between the glycogen and this one. And glycogen is called as animal starch because it is going to be present in animals. Starch is present in plants and whereas glycogen is present in animals, that is why we are going to call this one as animal starch. That is what we are going to have. The structural peculiarities for the glycogen and starch. Now the next one is cellulose. So cellulose if you are taking, it is going to be present mainly in plants. It is going to have beta D glucose. It is going to have beta D glucose. What is beta D glucose? OH, H, 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 OH, H, OH, H, 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 OH, H, 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 CH2, OH. The beta glucose is taken and it is going to have So this is the beta D glucose is going to have the linkage between these two. So what is this linkage? Beta 1,4 glycosidic bond. Beta 1,4 glycosidic bond will be present for your cellulose. The cellulose is not able to be get digested by an animal. Why? Because the enzyme which is responsible for the glycosidic bond breaking, in case of starch you are having alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond, that alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond can be broken up by your enzymes which are present in your animals, that is alpha 1,4 glycosidases. Whereas in our digestive system, we are not going to have beta 1,4 glycosidases, that is why we cannot able to digest your cellulose. So that is the reason we are not going to take cellulose in food quantity. Whereas starch is plentifully available in our food, but where we are going to have no cellulose in our food because we can't able to digest this one. Understand? And the cellulose is going to be insoluble in water. It is going to be insoluble in water and it is going to have very much importance in industrially. What importance we are having? Cellulose is going to be uh, making up so many semi-synthetic polymers. We can have nitrocellulose membrane which is going to be useful for your electrophoresic techniques and we are going to have cellulose acetate and we are going to have rayon which is going to be a wood pulp semi-synthetic polymer which is used as artificial silk. All these are going to be important products of your cellulose and your cellophane membrane we are going to be preparing which is going to be useful for dialysis purpose and all these are very important ones and even you are taking the explosives, explosives can also be prepared by using cellulose that is one more important property of your cellulose, <coughs> excuse me. When we are going to take a starch that is already I said it is a reserve food material, it is going to be useful in so many ways and glycogen is going to be a reserve food material for your animals and all these things are going to be a very important role in all living organisms when you are going to consider the glucose is called as dextrose which is going to be SDS we are going to give the silines whenever you are going to hospitals what they are going to give immediately they are keeping on saline what is that saline SDS what does it mean saline dextrose solution so immediately it is going to give the energy to our body that is the reason they are going to give that saline as the people usually are getting ill, they are not able to take the food and they can't digest. That's why they are directly, instantly they are giving the, the energy for the body by 
injecting directly the glucose into your blood vessel. And that is the reason we are going to keep a saline. And that is the reason. And we are having the glucose. I think you are having so many metabolic pathways where you are going to get energy from the glucose. Your glycolysis, TCA cycle, all these things we are going to have. And next we are going to have the ribose. Already I said it is going to be present in DNA and RNA. That is deoxyribose is present in DNA and ribose is going to be present in RNA. And these are the important points about the carbohydrates. And we have to see some important points about the carbohydrates. That is identification is going to be done by Mollusk test. Practical knowledge of carbohydrates is nothing but Mollusk test is the one which is going to identify your carbohydrates. In this, we are going to keep a carbohydrate solution with alcoholic alpha naphthal. We are going to have violet color ring. So, this is the identification of your carbohydrate. And secondly, we can able to get glucose and fructose is going to be get tested with failings test and tolens test. I already said the <coughs> enol rearrangement, Lobri de Bruin, one Eckstein rearrangement is going to give us the glucose get converted into fructose as well as manose. Even though fructose is not going to have aldehyde functional group, that is going to give a positive test for your tolens and failings. The reason is that in presence of alkali, that is dilute alkali, we can have this rearrangement and in the form of glucose and mannose, they are having aldehyde. That's why they are going to give positive failings test and tolerance test. That is the reason we can have the test positive for glucose fructose for both of them. That is why if you want to differentiate, we are going to do Selvinov's test. We are going to do Selvinov's test for your fructose. Fructose is going to give red color. So that we can able to differentiate glucose and fructose. That is the reason we are going to take both glucose and fructose are giving failings and the Tolens test. We are going to give Selvinov's test for differentiating glucose and fructose. And I already said the differentiation for any carbohydrate can be done by using Wasserzone test. Wasserzone test is the one which is going to confirm all the carbohydrates based on their shapes. Already I said Wasserzone how many? Phenyl hydrazine molecule are going to be useful. Three molecules of phenyl hydrazine is taken up by a carbohydrate and it is going to give wasazone crystals. The shape of wasazone crystal is going to differentiate all carbohydrate conformation. The glucosazone is giving needle shaped crystals and if you are taking ribose, it is a long needle crystals. If you are taking sucrose or maltose or you are taking lactose, they are going to give different different shapes. That is sunflower and we are going to have powder puff. So many shapes are there under the microscope. We are going to observe them and we are going to differentiate all these carbohydrates. And this is what we are going to have. The carbohydrates are going to be having in laboratory the tests. And regarding this, what are the doubts you are having? You can ask me when we are having the interaction session. Thank you.